Now, we were discussing the weighted pair queuing uh, algorithm uh, in the previous sessions and uh, what we saw is that, that the weighted pair queuing algorithms requires a computation of a quantity called virtual time and uh, virtual time uh, keeps track of the work done in the uh, fluid flow fair queuing systems and then uh, from the work done in the fluid flow fair queuing systems we compute something called uh, virtual finish time and that is something like a service tag each packet is then uh, uh, stamped with this service tags and in the weighted fair queuing or the packetized versions of the fluid flow fair queuing uh, the packets are then served in the increasing order of these service tags or what is called as the virtual finish times but we have also seen that the computation of this uh, uh, virtual time in re, uh, in real time can be difficult because the computation of this virtual time actually requires keeping track of the set of backlogged users this quantity virtual time is inversely proportional to the number of users that are backlogged and whenever this set changes that whenever the set of backlogged user changes there is a breakpoint in the uh, in 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 the virtual time curve okay so typically the virtual time is monotonically increasing with a slope which is inversely proportional to the number of backlogged users and whenever this set changes this slope changes if the number of backlogged users becomes more then you know the slope decreases otherwise you know if the number of uh, backlogged users becomes less the slope increases now the difficulty is that that uh, in 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 generalized processor sharing or the fluid flow fair queuing the number of uh, users there there may be many number of users who may finish their service simultaneously or there may be many queues which may become backlogged simultaneously so as a result the breakpoints in the virtual time may approach the total number of sessions in the systems and the total number of sessions in the systems can be arbitrarily very large okay in a let us say in a core router or a wide area networking router okay now if this number of sessions are very large then the computational complexity will become uh, of the order of the total number of uh, sessions okay so therefore uh, the real time computation of the virtual time may become difficult now today we will see what are the uh, other uh, methods uh, of uh, uh, having a packetized versions of the fair queuing algorithms uh, which are uh, uh, which are simple to implement okay which has uh, less implementation uh, complexity but before we go towards that uh, as we had seen uh, last time uh, that we wanted to ask this question that how fair is the packetized versions of the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm in the sense of maximum fairness and we had seen that the fluid flow versions of the fair queuing algorithm is uh, maximum fair okay and uh, there were several packetized versions which we have conceived of or thought of like one is weighted round robin or the deficit round robin and we found that uh, uh, these uh, techniques were unfair over shorter time scales and that is the reason we suggested the weighted pair queuing algorithms uh, and we state and we wanted to know that how fair is the weighted pair queuing algorithms and then we have this result where we said that let, uh, let dk is the time at which the kth packet departs uh, from the fluid flow fair queuing and dk hat is the time at which this packet departs from the weighted pair queuing then the difference between their departure times in the two scheduling systems is bounded by the L, by L max by R where L max happens to be the maximum size of the packet and R happens to be the output link rate. So what we are saying is that that the difference between the departure times of the packets in the two systems one is the fluid flow versions okay which is which is uh, just a abstract or a hypothetical systems and the other which is the packetized systems the difference between their departure times will always be bounded by the uh, by the maximum size of the packet divided by the output link capacity uh, so to that extent now l max by r is the time uh, it will be taken for uh, scheduling okay uh, the maximum size packet so to that extent the difference between the two departure times is bounded by the time taken 
uh, you know to transmit the maximum size packet the time taken to transmit the maximum size packet and this is the best that can be apparently done in the packetized versions of the fluid flow pair queuing algorithms but uh, let's prove this result you know and uh, and try we'll try to prove this result and then we will see whether we can have algorithms which are simple to implement in terms of the virtual time computations and as well as they are uh, you know somewhat fair okay so for, for, first let's prove the fairness of the weighted fair queuing algorithms okay so we'll try to prove this result now one thing that uh, uh, we have observed before we prove this result is that since both uh, the weighted fair queuing algorithms and the fluid flow fair queuing algorithms are work conserving okay since they are work conserving their busy periods will coincide okay so this is one important thing that we must keep in mind that a busy period of the weighted fair queuing algorithm will be equal to the or is the same it will be equal to the busy period of the fluid flow fair queuing algorithms so we'll prove this result uh, over any busy period okay so let's prove this result that is uh, d hat k minus d k this is bounded by l max by r so it, we we would like to uh, prove this result okay so let's consider the start of busy period and we call it to be the time zero okay so let's consider the start of any busy period okay uh, let us say we are considering the start of any busy period in the weighted fair queuing algorithm which is also the same in in the uh, gps or the fluid flow fair queuing and let us say in the weighted fair queuing algorithm p1 p2 okay these are all packets which uh, you know uh, depart in this order okay so pk is the kth packet to depart okay so this is like you know you're saying that kth packet to depart under pgps now what we say is that that let m be the largest integer okay such that m lies between 0 to k minus 1 and dm is greater than dk and also you know that dm is greater than dk is greater than or equal to di for all all right so what we are trying to say is that m let us say m is the largest integer so it happens for the first time at m such that all these packets afterwards okay pm plus 1 pk etc okay they will depart in the fluid flow fair queuing algorithms okay before uh, so, sorry after you know uh, before pm okay so now what's happening is that what we are saying is that the dm okay is the dm is the departure time in the gps okay dm is the time at which the packet departs in the fluid flow fair queuing what we are saying is that m is the largest integer okay now look at this way that p1 p2 pk you know in this order the packets are departing in the weighted fair queuing all right now m is the largest integer where dm is greater than dk that means the packet pm okay that departs in weighted in in, in fluid flow fair queuing after pk okay it departs after pk in pgps it departs before pk so in weighted fair queuing it is departing you know before pk but in fluid flow fair queuing it is departing after pk okay now this happens for the first time in m before that 
you know before that what we are considering is that all the packets okay uh, they depart okay in this order either earlier in with uh, gps or at least at the same time so this now this is the first time it is happening at the mth instant where the departure time dm of the mth packet happens to be greater than the departure time of the kth packet okay so we we'll, so what we are trying to say is that that the packet pm is transmitted before pm plus 1 so on up to pk under wfq but after all these packets pm plus 1 pk under gps or fluid flow fair queuing right <clears throat> so that is what we are trying to say let m is the largest integer that means uh, you know it happens for the first time in m where the packet pm happens to be transmitted before pm plus 1 pk so you know this packet obviously is transmitting before all these packets in the weighted fair queuing but this packet gets transmitted after pm plus 1 pk etc in the fluid flow versions of the fair queuing algorithms all right if uh, you know if no such m exists then obviously m is equal to 0 so we'll prove this results for m greater than 0 okay so what we are saying is that that the packet pm is transmitted okay before pm plus 1 pm plus 2 pk under weighted fair queuing but after pm plus 1 pm plus 2 pk under the fluid flow fair queuing all right now uh, let's see that the packet pm okay it begins transmission at d hat m minus lm by r in weighted fair queuing right now d hat m is the time at which the mth packet that is the pm packet departs in the weighted fair queuing lm is the length of the packet and lm by r is the transmission time so therefore the pm packet will begin transmission at at this time okay now note that this packets that is pm plus 1 pm plus 2 you know all these packets these pk they all of these packets obviously arrive after d hat m minus lm by r however they depart they depart before you know this is pk minus before pk under the generalized processor sharing or the fluid flow fair queuing and this is easy to see but we assume that the packet pm begins transmission at so this time and it is very easy to see that this packets m plus 1th packet m plus and up to k minus 1 packet they all arrive after d hat m minus lm by r but all these packets depart before the kth packet under the fluid flow fair queuing right so therefore dk will be greater than now dk is the time at which this kth packet departs in the fluid flow fair queuing system so therefore dk is greater than or equal to 1 upon r lk plus lk minus 1 these are all the length of the packets of the respective packet so on till lm plus 1 okay these are all you know the times it will take to transmit the kth packet k minus 1th packet and m plus 1th packet plus d hat m minus lm by r because 
all these packets you know they are all arriving you know after d hat m minus l m by r and therefore this should be equal to now if I add this d hat m to all that will become equal to d hat k minus l m by r and this shows that d k minus d hat k is less than or equal to l m by r and the maximum size of the l m okay, could be l max by r. So, therefore, we can say that the difference between the departure times of the packets okay, that is d, hat, d k minus d hat k sorry this will be d hat k minus d k that is the departure times of the packets in the fluid in the weighted fair queuing and the fluid flow fair queuing or the GPS will be bounded by the transmission time of the maximum sized packets. Okay. So, this we have proved you know the result that how fair is the weighted fair queuing algorithm. Now, as we have seen we would like to see whether you know there is a mechanism by which we can reduce the computational complexity of the weighted fair queuing algorithm. And Golistani in 1994 proposed a way of implementing fair queuing algorithm in the of in the packetized versions which reduces the computational complexity of you know computing the virtual time. That algorithm is called self clocked fair queuing algorithm. So, let us see you know how we can implement a computationally efficient packetized fair queuing algorithm which is called self clock fair queuing algorithm. Now, before we go to the self clock fair queuing algorithm which is actually you know trying to see whether we have an approximation to computing the virtual time okay, or a computationally efficient way of computing the virtual time. So, we have self clock fair queuing which is also called as abbreviated as SCFQ. Now, one thing we should note that f i k you know how are we computing the virtual finish time in the weighted fair queuing algorithm f i k. Note that f i k we are computing to be the virtual time when this packet will depart in the fluid flow fair queuing what we are doing what we are doing is that we were keeping track of the virtual time and we would find out what is the virtual time when this kth packet departs in fluid flow fair queuing right and at that time you know whatever the time that we note we call it the service tag or the virtual finish time so that is how we were computing the virtual finish time now this suggests that we can estimate the virtual time. It should be possible for us to estimate the virtual time by the by the finish tag of the packet. currently in service right so this this suggests you know because what we are doing is that since we are serving the packets in the increasing order of their finish tag and our finish tag that are being computed in the weighted fair queuing our philosophy of computing the finish tag in the weighted fair queuing is that the finish tag is actually the virtual time when this packet will depart in the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm so, if you really want to have a, a, a scheduling algorithm which closely approximates okay, in terms of fairness to the fair queuing algorithm or the weighted fair queuing algorithm, but does not require the computational complexity of the weighted fair queuing algorithm, then this suggests that suppose somehow we know the finish tag of the packet which is currently in service. So, if we know the finish tag of the packet which is currently in service, then 
by following the philosophy by which we had computed the virtual time in the weighted pair queuing algorithm, it should be possible for us to estimate the virtual time by looking at the finished tag of the packet which is currently in service. And after that, we can use you know the same recursive formula which we had used in the weighted fair queuing algorithm for computing the finished tags. Okay. So, let us say now that the jth packet of some lth session okay, or the lth packet of some jth session, lth packet of some jth session is currently in service let us say. Now, we find out what is the finish tag of this packet which is currently in service. By finding out this finish tag, we estimate you know the virtual time and if you estimate the virtual time and then subsequently the finish tags of the ith session, we can compute in the same manner in which we were computing it in the weighted fair queuing algorithm. Specifically, what we are trying to say is that we will tag the arriving packet, let us say the kth packet, let us say that a kth packet has arrived in the ith session, then we will tag the arriving packet with a finish tag of let us say f i k tilde. Okay. Now, that this tilde denoting that it is not the virtual finish time in the manner in which we had computed in the weighted fair queuing, but it is an approximation, approximate way of computing that. And then the finish tags will be computed as L i k upon rho i plus max of f i k minus 1 tilde that is the finish tag of the k minus 1th packet and and the virtual time of the packet which is arrived, estimated virtual time. So, the tilde denoting that the estimated virtual time when this kth packet has arrived. Obviously, our starting point is initial condition is that f i 0 is 0. Okay. So, we initialize this virtual time when the server becomes idle and similarly this finish tag of the q that is the of the 0th packet will start with the 0. The question now is how we estimate this virtual time when the packet arrives. Now, we say that we set okay, the virtual time at time t to be the finish tag of the lth packet of the jth service which is currently in service. So, that means you know if the time t lies between for all the time which lies between the starting time of the packet in service, pack the, the time when it starts its service in the packetized fluid flow of arcing algorithm which is denoted by s hat you know l j. That means, this is the starting time of the packet for the service of the lth packet of the jth session. Okay. So, for the time t for all time t lying between this start times and the departure times that is d okay, for all these times we will set the virtual time to be equal to the finish tag of the packet you know which is uh, f j l. Okay. And after putting this we will compute we will compute the finish tags of the ith sessions packet. Okay. Now, the situation is something like this that uh, some, some lth packet of the jth session is currently in service. Now, let us say that this packet starts its service at time s j and you know it finishes its service at time d j you know. So, between all those times we will you know compute the virtual time 
equal to the finish tag of this packet. Now, some packet, kth packet has arrived, you know, let us say in the ith session. So, aik, what we are trying to say this aik is the time which lies between, you know, this is let us say sjl and djl. So, if aik lies between these times, then we will put this virtual time to be equal to the finish tag of the packet which is currently in service. Okay. So, in some sense what we are trying to say is that, that you know the computation of the finish tag is since determined from the finish tag of the packet which is currently in service. Okay. So, this algorithm is therefore called self clocked fair queuing algorithm. Now, this algorithm note that does not require an emulation of the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm. Okay. This algorithm does not at all require an emulation of the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm which was required to be done in the weighted fair queuing algorithm and that was the lead cause of the computational complexity of the weighted fair queuing algorithm. This algorithm does not require any emulations. Okay. This is self clocked. So, this is that is the reason this algorithm is called self clocked fair queuing algorithm. Obviously, the question is same that is a self clock fair queuing algorithm fair. Okay. So, for this Gulistan introduced the notion of what is called as relative fairness. So, we will study the notion of relative fairness later, but just try to understand you know the fairness notions okay, somewhat differently. Now, note while computing the finish tag in the self clock fair queuing algorithm we had put this finish tax to be recursively computed by l i k upon rho i. Now, note that l i k is of course, the length of the packet and rho i is the rate which has been allocated to it. So, therefore, this is the transmission time plus we are adding these you know. So, the question obviously that arises is that why we add this quantity like this, why do not we do something like this that f i k that is the finish tag we compute as l i k upon rho i plus f i k minus 1. That is you know if we know the finish tag of the k minus 1th packet which is a packet ahead of uh, us, then if we know the finish tag of that then we keep on simply adding the length of the packet divided by rho i that is the transmission time and then compute the finish tag. So, what is the what is the difficulty okay, or what is the problem uh, uh, in, 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 in having like this. The difficulty is that that suppose right now a packet is in service um, and uh, let us say that its uh, finish tag is f. Okay. Now, let us say that there was one session you know when this session when this packet whose finish tag is f was taken for service. Okay. Obviously, among all the packets which are available this must have been the smallest tag and that is why this packet has been taken for service. Now, let us say that there was a session which was empty now suddenly it sends a burst of you know packet which are back to back. Okay. Now, if you follow this method then obviously, in this case as you know that f i 0 was 0. So, the finish tags of all these packets will start from 0. Okay. So, f i 0 will be 0 and f i 1 then will be l i 1 upon rho i. So, that way you know it will it will increase. Now, as a result till the finish tag becomes equal to f, all these finish tags will be lower than f. So, therefore, these packets will be served as after f you know all these packets will be taken up for service. And the other sessions which are anyway backlogged and which has the you know right to transmit the packets so called, they will be now starved, their packets will not be transmitted. What is happening? Why it is happening? This is happening because this particular session which was unbacklogged, which was absent, suddenly when it transmitted you know a, a, a some, uh, some amount of back to back packets, then this session which was absent has tries to accumulate the credits or tries to get the service which, has a, which it has missed and that should not happen. Okay the normalized service missed by this session okay, 
should not happen and that should be added to that okay while computing the virtual finish time so so that is the reason you know what we need to do is that we need to add okay uh, we need to add on this fik while computing the virtual finish tax lik upon rho i plus max of you know fik minus 1 v hat aik now this is actually denoting okay that the normalized service which is missed by the session you know this this we, ha we had ik the normalized service missed by the session should be added while computing the virtual finish times otherwise the sessions which are unbacklogged or the sessions which are absent get an undue advantage by accumulating the credits for the service which they have missed and then you know try to transmit now okay or try to transmit more packets and therefore become you know causing unfairness to the other sessions okay so this is really you know the concept that a session will never get you know such service the service you know the normalized service which it has missed while it was unbacklogged so then while asking this question that whether the self clock fair queuing algorithm is fair or not okay uh, it was argued that we will introduce a notion of something called as the relative fairness okay what is the relative fairness in the relative fairness we will try to see what is the difference between the normalized service received by two sessions what is the difference between the normalized service received by two sessions which are backlogged in the self clocked fair queuing algorithms and not try to compare between the normalized service received by this session in the self clock fair queuing algorithm with respect to the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm no we will try to see what is the difference between the normalized service received by two backlog sessions in the self clock fair queuing algorithm itself now the philosophy is that note that the self clock fair queuing algorithm is not based upon the emulation of the fair queuing algorithm it is not based upon the it is it is a it's a packet based fair queuing algorithm and our philosophy is that that we are designing a packet based fair queuing algorithms in such a manner that the normalized service received by two backlog sessions will rem if, if it remains bounded okay if it remains bounded by a small amount if it remains bounded by a small amount then obviously this algorithm can be said to be somewhat fair right you know that is that is how the definition of the fairness is that we should not unfairly service other sessions at the expense of the other uh, at the expense of uh, some other sessions so therefore you know the idea was that we will introduce the notion of the relative fairness which will try to measure uh, the difference between the normalized service received by two backlog sessions in the self clock fair queuing algorithm itself now let us see you know let us try to analyze how much is this bound so to to do that what we are trying to say is that that a normalized service opportunity the normalized service opportunity which has been missed by a session while it was unbacklogged should also be taken into considerations okay so that is the uh, that is the basic uh, philosophy you know of defining this relative fairness okay so let us define few terms and then we'll state the result which will tell us that how much is the relative fairness of the self clocked fair queuing algorithm okay so actually it's not therefore what we're saying is that it's not fair okay uh, just to compare the normalized service uh, normalized service received by two backlog sessions but we should also see how much is the service opportunity which has been missed by the sessions while it was unbacklogged so we'll define okay so to do this fairness analysis let us define the missed normalized service the, the service opportunity which has been missed by the session UIS MSS 
I am just denoting it to be for some packetized uh, uh, scheduling algorithms or any scheduling al S. So, if S is uh, if S equal to W of Q then it will be it will be indicating W of Q, if S is equal to GPS then it will be indicating the fluid flow fair queuing algorithms, if S is equal to SCFQ then it will indicate it for the self clock fair queuing algorithm. So, define U i S to be equal to 0 at time time 0 and U i S T minus U i S tau to be equal to 0 you know if the ith session is backlogged in, in that uh, Flu, uh, fair queuing algorithm between tau to t and this is equal to v s t minus v s tau if this session is you know unbacklogged. So, what it is trying to say is that that the normalized service missed by the session during tau to t that is equal to 0 if this session was backlogged obviously if the session was backlogged the session was receiving some service. However, this is equal to the difference between the system's virtual time okay, if the session was not backlog. Okay. What it is trying to say that the system's virtual time is keeping track of the work done by the system. Okay. So, if this session was not backlogged during an interval of you know tau to t then in that case the normalized service opportunity missed by it will be equal to the uh, you know increase in the virtual time the system virtual time that is occurred okay the second thing is that uh, we now define the okay so uh, obviously the uh, you know the interval tau to t is any sub interval of the busy period whether the where the session i is either absent or it is backlogged okay now the virtual time so we define this quantity which is called virtual time of session i okay so what it is trying to say the virtual time of the session i is given by the normalized service opportunity missed plus the normalized service received by the session okay so it is the sum of these okay virtual time of the session i obviously if the session is backlogged at time t then you know this quantity will be zero and it will it will denote how much is the service that the user has received okay otherwise it will be equal to the normalized service opportunity missed by the session i now one thing that should be noted is that in uh, uh, so sessions virtual time you know if you see what what we are trying to say is that that this v i s 0 is 0 you know at time t equal to 0 and v i s t minus v i s tau that is the difference between the sessions virtual time will be equal to the normalized service received okay during the interval tau to t if the session was backlogged right and it will be equal to the system virtual time if this session was not backlogged all right so sessions virtual time the sessions virtual time will be equal to the normalized service received if the session is backlog otherwise it will be equal to the systems virtual time if it is not backlog we define now the service lag we define the service lag of the ith session in the scheduling when the packet scheduling algorithm is s to be the difference between the system's virtual time and the session's virtual time. It actually indicates how far behind the session i is with respect to the system's you know virtual time that is the progress of the actual work done in the system. So, that will indicate how much session i is lagging 
behind the service. Okay. Now, let us look at the specific example of the GPS or the fluid flow fare queuing algorithm. Right. Now, in the fluid flow fare queuing algorithms, the sessions virtual time okay, that is V i s t 2 minus V i s t 1. Okay. The difference between the sessions virtual time that will always be equal to the systems virtual time for all sessions i. Okay. It will always be equal to the systems virtual time. That means, what we are trying to say is that in GPS server, the sessions virtual time, the sessions virtual time is always equal to the systems virtual time, right. In the GPS server, the sessions virtual time is always equal to the systems virtual time. That means, the service lag, the service lag of the session I, okay, in the GPS server is always 0. Okay. So, in GPS server, the service lag of a session is always 0. The service lag is always 0. So, the sessions virtual time is always equal to the virtual time of the system in the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm and this leads to the service lag of you know the session, the service lag of the session being always 0 in the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm. Note that this is not true in the packetized versions of the fair queuing algorithm and, and why, why the uh, service lag is 0? Because the sessions virtual time is always equal to the systems virtual time. Okay, because systems virtual time is increasing in proportion to the normalized service received by the backlogged users, right? And the sessions virtual time is also increasing proportional to the normalized service it receives if it is backlogged, right? So, so therefore, you know, and and the normalized service received by all backlog sessions are equal. So, therefore, the sessions virtual time becomes equal to the systems virtual time. Now, this is not true in the case of other packet based fair queuing algorithms like you know in the SCFQ. Now, we, we it can be then proved okay. So, the important result you know that can be proved is and although we will not try to prove but let me just state a, a lemma that in self clocked fair queuing algorithm okay it can be shown. that the service lag right that is the w i s c f q and right that is the service lag okay which is equal to the difference between the sessions virtual time and the systems virtual time okay which is equal to the v of s c f q t minus or v i of SCFQT that is the difference between the systems virtual time and the sessions virtual time. This is the service lag is bounded by okay, L max okay, the maximum sized packet of the ith session by rho i. So, the service lag in the case of SCFQ will lie between 0 and L max by rho i. So, so you know so that result can be proved. Okay. Note that in the case of a fluid flow fair queuing algorithm, the service lag is 0. In the case of self clock fair queuing algorithm, the service lag is not 0. The session I is it may lag behind, one particular session may lag behind the, uh, the work done in the systems, but that remains bounded and that is what you know this result is trying to prove. So, let us define now the differential service. Uh, uh, lag. So, one corollary of this is that W i S C F Q 
which is defined. So, with this we call it the differential service lag. This is a difference between delta i sorry uh, SCFQ T minus del i of SCFQ of tau right. So, the difference between the two service lags okay, which is which we are calling it to be the differential service lag which will be equal to V of that is the virtual time between tau to t minus V of V i between tau to t right. So, it follows that the differential service lag you know it will be bounded this differential service lag will be bounded by del i SCFQ tau t that will be bounded by L i max by rho right. This result we can prove it from from this. Now, which means for a session i which is backlogged between tau to t you know if you if you look at this result then note that the sessions virtual time the sessions virtual time if the session is backlogged that is equal to the normalized service received by it. So, therefore, this indicates that this you know this result will state that right because this is the differential service lag the differential service lag is the difference between the systems virtual time t tau minus the sessions virtual time tau t right now the sessions virtual time that is equal to the normalized service received okay so that is what we have replaced it now this means if there are two sessions i and j which are backlogged continuously backlogged in the scfq during this interval then from this result we will we will know that the difference between the normalized service received by these two sessions right is bounded by L i max by rho i plus L j max by rho i. Now, this is an important result which is actually trying to prove the relative fairness of the two sessions which are continuously backlogged during this interval in the SCFQ. What we have actually you know stated is that the difference between the normalized service received by two sessions which are continuously backlogged will be bounded by the the transmission time for the maximum size packet of the ith session plus the transmission time of the maximum size packet of the jth session for the these two sessions i and j now this indicates you know how much is the fairness of the self clock fair queuing algorithm right? this is a result that we have proved in terms of the fairness of the fair queuing algorithm right now this is obviously uh, as we as I have already told you that in, in this case we are not trying to compare the fairness of the self clock fair queuing algorithm with respect to the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm. This is some kind of a relative fairness notion that we have introduced. The reason being that, that we are not doing any the philosophy was that we are not doing any emulation of the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm here. We are having a straight packet based queuing algorithm and we we hoped that if the normalized service received by two backlog sessions in this packet based queuing algorithms if it can be bounded 
by a small amount, then you know we we have done the job. We are almost fair, right? So the question obviously is that that what is possible in any packet-based queuing algorithm, and there is a and there is a result which states that for any packet-based system. the normalized service, the difference between normalized service received by the ith i and the session j will be less than or equal to some quantity f i j, which is not a function, note that this is not a function of the interval tau to t, the times tau to t, just a function of the sessions i and j and where this f i j will be greater than or equal to half of L i max upon rho i plus L j max upon rho j. Okay. So, so this quantity where f i j. Now, note that the self clock fair queuing algorithm achieves this, you know L i max upon rho i plus L j max. So, we can see that the self clock fair queuing algorithm is almost optimal, it is almost optimal by a factor of 2. So, we can say that as far as the packet based queuing algorithms are concerned, the design of a packet based queuing algorithm with the concept of this relative fairness, we are, we are trying to bound the difference between the normalized service received by two backlog sessions. The self clock fair queuing algorithm is almost optimal. Okay. That, so, that is an important result that we have proved and, and interestingly it turns out that the self clock fair queuing algorithm does not require okay, uh, any emulation of the fluid flow fair queuing algorithm and therefore, it is computationally very efficient. All you need to do is that to know the to keep knowing the progress of the work done in the system, you just need to know the finish tag of the packet which is currently in service. Okay. So, this way you know we have uh, we have designed a fair queuing algorithm which is uh, which is which is quite optimal uh, with with respect to the relative fairness notion